Hey everyone, it's Joey Edwards here and I'm at the Bomb Factory in Dallas, Texas before the Volbeat Show and I've got a, a buddy here named Pete Abdu. He is a YouTuber. He's also the drum technician or what is the official title? Yeah, drum technician. Yeah. Drum technician. Okay, so I'm here with Pete. We came out early. We're going to enjoy the show. I wanted to meet up with him and ask him a few questions since he gave us his time. We, we really appreciate it. So, you know what? I saw your latest video where you wrapped the drums in, yeah. uh, I believe the bass drums have the jaws. Tell us a little bit more about... Where'd you get the rap from? You know, I, sure, I know what inspired yeah, yeah, it, but sure, maybe sure. just recap for those who haven't well, John, seen. John, um, John's a big horror movie fan, so he's been wanting to make a monster kit forever. And I mean, as big as it is, it is a monster kit, but a different type of you know, monster kit. So like literally monsters. Literally monsters. Right. Yeah. So I mean, he's got a row of bobbleheads that are all monster bobbleheads, and he wanted to make the drums that way too. So you know, he's he's a classic movie monster guy. Right. You know, there's an artist named uh, Basil Gogo that. Did all the old artwork of Dracula and Creature from the Black Lagoon, and even I think he even did some Misfits covers. Okay. And um, me and John kind of sat and went through a bunch of pictures, and and uh, he picked a bunch that he, he thought he liked. So we'd have to try to find high resolution prints to send to the company that was going to make them, and then decide on a color and all that. So right. uh, we went through. We had ten to cho ten that we had to choose because he has ten drums he wanted to wrap, and um, we ended up finding. Uh, quite a quite a few. We actually changed one out because it didn't quite look the way we wanted it. And right. Which, which one was that? Uh, it was we initially on his two floor toms. We had two different uh, Draculas. We had the Christopher Lee Dracula, and then the other one is I'm gonna try to act I'm gonna have to remember now. Right. Um, the other one. Uh, forgive me, John. Christopher Lee's drawing wasn't high resolution enough. Right. So we changed it over to Ingrid Pitt. Who played in a bunch of horror movies, including and she was uh, she was Countess Dracula in one of the movies right. as well. Um, so that was one of them that we switched over, and then there was another one that uh, has no. There's another drum that has Nosferatu on it, but it's a close-up, and he wants to change it to more of a far shot to see it better, right. for clarity. So that's that's actually something I have to still do. I haven't been able to change it out yet. Right. We've been on tours. So. I mean, how visible is it from the crowd? Big, like the bass drum images are pretty big. We have uh, King Kong from the 30s and. Uh, and Gorgo, who everyone mistakes for Godzilla, uh, is a 1961 British uh, tribute to Godzilla. Right. And he had his own movie. And John decided to go more obscure than just do Godzilla. Okay. He went Gorgo. So those two images are pretty big, and you can really see those. And then one of his front toms is actually a picture of Jerry Only from the Misfits. Okay. Who was a friend That's... of John's. And he promised oh, cool. Jerry that if he did a monster kit, that he would put him on the drum. Uh, you know, the double bass, I see how it's yep. uh, you have Jaws down there. What, why the decision to put Jaws front and center and maybe not alternate them and put one creature on one and one creature on the other? Jaws is his all-time favorite. Right. I mean, he collects everything Jaws and, and multiple versions of the posters, the shirts, you know, whatever. Right. So oh, cool. that actually came about before I wrapped the kit. When we toured in April this year, those heads were made for the tour and they just we kept them on that kit because we knew we knew we were going to wrap it right. so they were already on there before the monster yep. motif yep. okay cool yep. and it just kind of completes it really you right know, now that we do have the wraps uh, a company out of maryland made the wraps named bum rap uh, bum rap drum company uh b-u-m-w-r-a-p drum company right uh in maryland and they're really easy to do i mean it's not once they make them and they send them to you they don't ruin the finish on your drum. They just you wrap it around and it sticks to itself. It's basically peel and stick. Right. It's just so, vinyl. You can just yeah, take it off when you're you know, done. It's just time consuming because you have to cut all the holes yeah. for the screws to go through and I'll put right. all the hardware back on and it's right. time consuming, you know. And all John's drums are internally mic'd, so you gotta take the mic systems out and rebuild that, make sure they're working. So I mean it's a it's a task, especially if you have a big kit. Well I'm glad you covered that. I was kinda gonna go there. I was gonna ask. Yeah. First of all, a big shout out to Seth. That's your yeah, nephew, right? Seth, yeah. yeah, I like to I like yeah. to watch Pete's YouTube videos quite a bit, and uh, Seth can play guitar. Yep. Uh, in fact, you play drums yourself, yeah, of course. and you teach drums. Yeah, White's Music uh, Education Center, North Attleboro, Massachusetts. I was there for 15 years. I moved to California in 2009, so I stopped teaching there, and uh, didn't really pursue it in California. Uh, got more into the crew stuff and touring and uh, drum teching more than the playing part of it. I still played. I played with a few bands out in California while I wasn't on the road. But it's hard when you're on the road, you can't really commit to a band, you know, so. Right. Um, it kind of falls to the wayside until you're off the road. Right. Well, you know? what I was gonna ask you about the drum kit is, um, earlier you'd mentioned that you weren't on stage yet. 
you got to get all the lighting up first because that hangs from the ceiling so the whole stage is full of lighting truss and sound and all that so we have to wait for that to go up in the air before sure. we can actually put our stuff up there so that's the first thing to do in the morning is get the rigging done and get the motors to, to hang the truss and get all that stuff up so that the back line, back lines last. Do you set up and tear down the drum kit, including the microphones and everything in between every show or does it just load up as is in, yeah. how, how do you break it down and set it up? I mean, everything goes into four cases that okay. I, had, I had designed specifically for this kit. They all break down into four basically red cases that I can say to anybody, it doesn't matter if they know anything about drums or not, go get the four red cases, you can't right. miss them. So. <clears throat> they all fit, they stack, and they fit perfectly the width of a semi or a trailer. Right. Um, and everything loads into there, so everything comes apart. Right. You know, all the okay. drums come off the stand. So it's modular, but it, if it does come apart... And yeah, I don't have to fold a lot of the, a lot of the uh, boom cymbal arms or anything. I just pull them off the rack and put them in the case. Okay. So it's made for that too, so I don't have to completely fold everything down and um, you know get it as small as I, I, I would have to normally. So. Right. It's uh, it's convenient. You know, it's it's uh, it's pretty easy once you get used to it. Uh, even though it's a large kit, once you get used to it, it's like second nature. You know. Very cool. You know, I, I'm going to say that I'm biased here, but John is the hottest, best, most talented drummer in rock music today. He's one of the most consistent drummers that yeah, I've absolutely. encountered for sure. Like every night that he gets up there, I mean, rarely makes a mistake. He plays right. all the parts exact to what you know he played on the record or what you know what he felt the night before he, I mean it, it doesn't change a lot he knows those songs like right you know I think they all do this is like gonna be this is gonna be the fifth time that I've seen him and yeah. so far in four four shows they've been very consistent and I've seen him with different lineups this is going to be the third time with Rob on guitar yep. and the first two times were in the festivals that I mentioned yep. and that was back when Thomas was Thomas, that the guitarist um, Brent well, in 2012... No, that was Hank Sherman from Merciful Fate. Is that who that was? He filled in for a year after Thomas left. Okay. All the runs in 2012. And all then right. Rob came on board at the end of that year as they were recording Outlaw. Right. Um, and he was helping co-produce and played a bunch of leads on it. And then Michael really liked what he was doing, so he decided he was going to uh, ask him to stay. And he did. You know. To ask Rob to stay. Yep. Yep. You know, That's speaking true. of that, Rob, so he's produced, he's engineered, same thing. He's oh, engineered yeah. the last two... Yeah discs um and, and this last one you were without a bass player at the time and there's some promo shots with only three band members right and rob has the bass credit on this album right. yeah. I, I, you know i'm a bass player actually a um, yeah. hobbyist and i think some of the bass lines are pretty cool bass wise guitar wise i mean just the songwriting is great right um, yeah and from you know the drums the bass the guitar the vocals that was my favorite thing honestly is michael's vocals yeah when I first heard of them, I was like, well, his cadence, yeah. his delivery, his range, yeah. is very impressive. Yeah. What's your most favorite thing about touring with these guys? I probably can ask you what your least favorite thing is. You want to ask my least favorite thing? Yeah, the least favorite thing? I guess the least favorite thing would be talking to guys on the sidewalk, out, no, sidewalk no, no, outside no. before the show. The least favorite thing is probably the, certain, a lot of the travel we do if we have to fly too much. Especially in Europe, when we do festivals there's a lot of downtime because the festivals aren't back to back right so you might do one you have two days off you gotta fly to the next location right and then you fly back and then you got two or three days off and you fly to the next location so that's nerve-wracking right at times a wolf you know you know they um they appear to be they're very huge in in the states yeah okay but they're like from what i can gather twice as big yeah, in Europe so and they're yeah three times so they're doing yeah. festivals to sold out shows of what hundred thousand people ninety thousand people on a regular basis um I mean they, they sell out arenas over there 80 yeah. I mean their outdoor festivals yeah. are huge and the, I mean the outdoor festivals for sure yeah I mean they're and, and this year they headlined a lot of them that they right. would have played an earlier slot right in previous years like Rock'em Ring and Rock'em Park and all those right. headline those this year. Which I mean, I do appreciate you meeting with me. I yeah, just got no a problem. couple more sure. questions. We saw when we pulled up that the, what what is it called? The backdrop, the we main... We call it a skull wing. The skull the wing. Metal skull wing, yeah. Okay, so a, that, right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. This right here, this right here yeah. is not going to make it on stage tonight, and you said there was a couple of reasons for that. Yeah, I mean, uh, size of the stage, how how... What happens with the skull wing, and people have seen this live through the whole tour, is it, it hangs in the air. In Europe, it actually lights on fire. 
right. and it shoots fire. But we don't do that over here. The budget's not there yet. Um, with insurance, you got to get and all that stuff. Right. Liability, it's you know not worth doing over here yet. So, and the the venue size matters with with these things. So we bring the skullwing anyway, just for effect. And sure. Niller does lighting on it, and it looks really cool. Lights up different colors, and it's um it hangs in front of a backdrop but then there's another backdrop in front of that that's called a kabuki okay and it's a tearaway right so it'll that when you look at it as an audience you'll see a backdrop that after say five six songs gets torn away and then it's the back backdrop and the skulling in front of it right if it's hung too close a lot of times that when you tear that away it'll get caught up on the right on the skull wing, and that's kind of what happened today. So instead of risking tearing that really expensive backdrop right. by it piercing it or whatever, they decided that it was too close. There's no, there's no one way around it. We don't want to risk it. Let's take it down, and we'll just use the backdrop itself. Sure. You know? So I mean that you make those decisions as as you test things out, you know, and you just yeah. sometimes you don't use everything that you have. So, even though you guys have your game down from city to city, yeah. everything changes. You have Things to change. Yeah, the venue size changes, the, the the depth of the stage changes, the height, everything, ceiling height. You know how much you can hang right. because of you know uh, weight limits too. A lot of times you can't hang too much stuff because of the weight limit uh, on the ceiling too. So that that um, that happens very rarely, but it does happen. Right. You know, so. Well, real quick while we're rolling, I do want to give a shout out to Leah Bell. She's a huge fan of Volbeat. She's very good. Yeah, and well, I'm sorry, what was that? She's very good. Did, did you hear that, Leah? I've seen her on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we love all of your um, your acoustic covers, Leah. You're great, and we love the beautiful bunch. You know, it, it was pretty cool. You're a YouTuber, plus you have a really fabulous job, a pretty cool job. Thank you. And uh, I, love I, it. I uh, like I said, I appreciate your time. And until the next video, thanks for watching. See you.